We're back. We are back with the top 10 questions that you guys are commenting down below on all of the videos. I am with Hanifa Brown. I am with Alejandra Merch. We are going to answer all of these questions. We are going to answer all these questions. It's not going to just be me. We're going to give as much, much, much. We're going to deep dive these questions as much as possible because some of these questions we can't just respond to by text. So we want to give them the, the respect that they deserve. So here it comes. Boom! Okay, we are back with top 10 questions. I am Brent Daniels. Thank you so much for checking out this channel. If this is your first time here, thank you for checking it out. Make sure you check out all the videos. It is action-packed with a lot of value that we provide for people that are interested and have the passion for wholesaling real estate. So, as we do these videos, oftentimes people ask questions down below. They comment down below because they know that we answer the questions that we have. But some of them are a little bit tougher, a little bit, have a few layers to them. And some of them are just common that I feel like we're not answering as effectively as we can. So that is the point of these videos. So uh, Alejandra and Hanifa have the questions. Let's rock and roll. Let's get some answers going. Let's go. Okay. All right. So Benjamin Cavazos says, okay. great interview. Always awesome. providing value, Brent. Awesome. Where is the best source to find vacant land deals? Ah, okay. Well, there's an easy answer to this, and then there's a couple different resources that I can give you. Uh, VacantHouseDataFeed.com. Okay, that's a great resource for you. Now, it's not available in all areas, so make sure you check and see if it's available wherever you are doing business. Uh, another one, you can certainly go to Flip This Real Estate List. Uh, put in the code TTP to make mm -hmm. sure that you get pushed to the top of the line. Okay. I mean, what, what, Alejandro, you deal with this all the time. I mean, the best list out there is the Deal Machine app. Well, driving for dollars. Well, driving for dollars, yeah. yeah. But Deal Machine app, coupon code TTP. Um, I have a, a team that I am in charge of that actually goes out and drives under our names mm -hmm. and they go out and find us deals. So that's always helpful. They're called Deal Finders, so definitely yeah. check that out. Um, an easy way to get a, a really good list and go and get some vacant land. Well, vacant land, vacant properties. properties too. Well, and you know when they're driving around, they literally put in the notes if it's yeah. vacant. And when you're when you're driving around, here, the easy answer when I, that I alluded to earlier was just drive the neighborhoods, yeah. just find out properties that look mm -hmm. like they're totally run down, or go to the door and see if anything's going on. Oftentimes, there's some characteristics of it. Obviously, the grass is going crazy, or the yard looks rough, or if, it, if you're in a cold weather state, there's a lot of snow piled up, uh, but you can see mail in the mailbox just hanging around. Mm -hmm, you get yeah. you know notices on the doors. The obvious pretty, signs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are the typical ones that we got. Yep. Right. Thank you, Benjamin. Great question. Go out. Vacant properties, guys. I mean, what are people are losing money every day that they're vacant. So go after them hard. Okay. This question is from Tint Time 17. Yep. What if the bank owns a pre-foreclosure? Uh, well, banks don't own pre-foreclosures. Bank own foreclosures. So there's a couple differences here. And this is a question that we get a lot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, is the difference between a pre-foreclosure and a foreclosure. Now, pre-foreclosure is... They haven't, somebody hasn't paid their mortgage for a while and the bank is in the process of foreclosing the property, okay? Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful time to get after these properties because once it goes through foreclosure and the bank owns the property, the bank is gonna want to list it with a real estate agent, right? Exactly. And then you're going to have a lot of more, um, a lot more hoops to jump through because mm -hmm. now you have foreclosure attorneys involved, um, they have to have approval on sale and mm -hmm. the dollar amounts, you have additional fees added in. So pre-foreclosure is the time to get after those properties. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you can catch somebody, and here's the key though, just because it's in pre-foreclosure doesn't mean that it has equity. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna wholesale property, one of the key ingredients is they have to have equity in the property. If somebody owes a hundred ninety thousand, yep, and their house is worth two hundred thousand. Yep. Makes no sense. You're, you're you're not you're you're typically not making a, a deal there. Now there's some creative financing stuff that you can do, but this channel is about getting big, fat wholesale deals. So uh, really, you want to check the equity. You want to make sure that it's not already been foreclosed and owned by the bank, like Kanifa was saying. There's a ton of hoops that you have to go through. Now, if you're an agent. 
if you're a real estate agent out there, totally different situation. Yeah, you can you can potentially get a relationship, right? Yeah, with the bank, and then see if you can draw in all those accounts, list those properties for them. And then it's free it's listings. Different. I mean, they literally yeah. just when they get a when they when they take back an asset or a house, they give it to the the real estate agent to sell it, and they try to get as much as possible. And, and what Hanif was saying is they have restrictions on how low they can go based on the time on the market. So they, they don't just take low ball offers. Precisely. Yeah. What do we got? Alrighty. Minerva Perez. Yep. Um, what are the best and most comfortable headset to mm. use with great noise reduction? Okay. <laughs> also, um, you mentioned the right PC with the right specs. What is your recommendation in addition? Okay. I know you mentioned Mojo Dialer a lot. Yep. I'm curious, between Mojo and Vulcan, or Vulcan 7, mm. which do you recommend and why? Interesting. Um, a lot of questions. Yeah, so let's let's hit with the headset. I always, I, I didn't care about noise canceling. Um, I, I tried to use uh, something that was over the ears, that was like a, you know, something that like a helicopter pilot would use, yeah. and it would just make my head hot and, and like, like I get it, like some people love um, like Beats by Dre type of headsets, yeah. and those are probably the best when it comes to, or a Bose, when it comes to noise canceling, all those have, mm -hmm. you know, hookups for your phone and everything, so those could work really I well. I like the Bose, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, um, but I would just use, I just use the AirPods, and before that, I just used the, the free uh, headset that came I with the iPhone. Headset. Right, yeah. I mean, it just depends on how much, I don't think, Number one, do not let that stop you from making calls. Exactly, I was gonna say that. <laughs> like, I don't care if you have to put it on speakerphone. I don't yeah. care if you have to hold it to your your face and your face gets all sweaty on the screen of your phone if you're making the call. So don't let that prevent you from doing that. Um, when it comes to a computer, whatever dialing system you use, whether it be Mojo or Vulcan 7 or whatever, or some of these call tools or other things. And it's interesting that you mentioned Vulcan 7. That's, a, that's rare. You must be in real estate. And we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> um, but um, just, just check with their specs. They all have different specs and mostly uh, it's the processor speed in your computer and, but more importantly, it's going to be your connection to the internet. Yeah. Um, almost all of these, uh, you can get an app on your phone and do it from your phone. So you don't even need your computer. So that's, that's part of it. Uh, Mojo Vulcan 7. Vulcan 7 provides you with some leads. It's much more expensive. Uh, it's not as user friendly. Uh, Mojo is just the learning curve is super, super, super short. So that's why I, that's why I suggest it. Make sense? Makes sense. sense. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. It yeah. does. Okay, this is from Devin Olson. Hey, Brent, how many leads are they producing with call motivated sellers between the three to four callers <laughs> you have, and then what is the conversion rate that you are seeing on those leads? Thanks for all your value, brother. Devin, my man, here we go. Like, this is the most common question that I get all the time because basically everybody wants the perfect answer that says, if I hire somebody at this cost and they do it for this amount of hours, mm -hmm. this yeah. is how much money I'm gonna make. Yeah. That is a loaded question. There's and no one answer for that. No one there, answer. There's not, because here's the thing. Listen, I get it. I'm gonna try to give you, I'll give you my numbers. I understand that, okay? But just because it's my numbers doesn't mean it's gonna be your numbers. Your numbers could be way better. It could be way worse. Here's the things that, that, that you have to take into account. One, is the the quality and the skills of the individual caller making the calls okay i have a caller that can go and 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 do 20 deals 30 deals a year i've got another one that'll do five you know what i mean it really depends on the skills of the caller make sure that they're really solid and active listening make sure they stick to the script and make sure that their first four seconds of the conversation is the best it's flawless because that'll get you the next 30 seconds so skills from the prospector next once they, once that lead comes to you, how quickly are you getting in front of these people? What lists are you calling? What is the amount of distress in them? How much pre-qualifying are you doing with these leads? And then when you go on the appointments, are you doing, are you able to close them on the deal? So all of this, just there is, you can't say plug in here and there's an exit here and that's, 
that's how it works. It just doesn't work that way because most of this has to do with sales skills. Most of this has to do with human uh, communication, right. understanding different personality types, different timelines people have, different motivations that they have. What I would say is this, they typically get me about 0.7 leads an hour. Okay, so if they're calling for 40 hours, it's somewhere around 30 leads per. And then from that, it takes me about 60, 60 to 65 leads to close a deal. Now we get rid of a lot of deals that are smaller because our average deal size is about 27,000. We want to keep that up, right? So we really, really, we lose out on competition on some deals because we want to get the biggest, best deals. We don't want to do it do deals that are smaller. So there are some answers for you there, but really it is all about doing it, testing it and understanding your numbers. How many people are you talking? How long are you on the phone? How many leads are you getting? How many leads turn to contracts? How many contracts to closings? Track your numbers. There's a video on it in, in this, uh, on this channel, right? Good answer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like well, we get it all the time. I mean, I literally answer that. I, I answer that question at least three times a week, just with my students, just with people reaching out, that type of thing. So, um, guys, don't don't hallucinate, right? Don't say I'm going to take Brent's numbers, plug it in here, and that's what I'm going to do, and build my whole system around it. Just start talking to people, have people talking to people, and see what your results are. TTP. TTP. That's right. Let's go. Joe Almeida. Brent, yeah. awesome idea. Th that's a niche that doesn't have as much competition and it seems so obvious after watching the video, of course. Yep. What's the exit plan if you can't find a buyer though? A seller probably won't ex accept an inspection period on land. So is there ah. another exit strategy to not lose your deposit if Love you can't it. find a buyer in time and the yep. seller demands a deposit yes. because it's an expensive. Uh, I love it. So he's talking about, uh, what was his name? Joe Alameda. Joe Alameda. Joe, listen, uh, it's the exact opposite when it comes to land. Land, uh, we put the inspection period for the entire period, right? There's a lot that has to go into the due diligence of land. Mm -hmm. This is not a house that you can look and say, is it livable or not? Mm -hmm. yeah. How close are the utilities? What's access like to the property? Has there been anything dumped on the property? Is there any kind of uh, environmental... Yeah, sure, environmental, environmental issues or environmental protections. <laughs> Is there any kind of, um, uh, do you have uh, an easement, easement on the property? Do easement. you have any of those, right? Easement. What was that cabin that you had? We, we lost, we had a cancel contract because they didn't have an easement. Right. There was no access to property. That's but they had easement. used it, they had they used, used it for it years and years, years and years. But, but there was no recorded easement. easement. These are things that you have to find. And I get that the cabin is not land, but this cabin was a skeleton. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, was a, it was. It was land. land. It was land. It was land. Really, it was. So when it comes to that, set your inspection period for. Uh, explain to the owner of the property that you have to go and talk to the planning and zoning uh, um, division to make sure you know what you can put on there. If you can even put things on there, what? <laughs> why, why are you guys being secretive over here? Because there's, because Something there's happened to my coffee, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> well, good. okay. Uh, I'm like, what is going on? Okay. Sorry. Uh, the neighborhood, I, I mean, just look and see if they've got past due taxes. Look and see what the utilities look like. Do all the, all the due diligence that you need to do so that you know that you're making a good deal and that the end buyer that's going to buy that property is going to want to know that information. The more that you know that up front, the easier those will be to sell. Cool. Great question, Joe. Really great question. question yep. And we're making a ton on land. I am telling you, vacant land. Don't sleep on it. Hmm. Okay, so this is from Uncle Grandpa. Uncle Ooh, Grandpa, back him. again. Yeah. He's back. <laughs> okay, so he has the Deal Machine app and he put his home address and cell phone number and sent out 10 or more mailers. Yes. But then held back after realizing that my address is on the mailers. Should I get a P.O. box and a different phone number for the business? That's a great idea. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, P.O. boxes are great things. You can also get a virtual P.O. box, which is really interesting. It, it the mail goes into this company's um, wherever they get their mail and they scan it and literally email you it. So there's no physical mailbox, which is a virtual PO box um, is a great option. Or you can just go down to, you know, a, um, what do we have by our, uh, the house, the uh, UPS store. 
yeah. FedEx, a lot of those places have um, really pretty um, decently priced little um, mailboxes that you can get. Um, also, what was the second part of that? Phone number, yeah, CallRail, CallRail.com. How, how often are you in CallRail? I, mean, I have five different CallRail numbers. Yeah. Because I'm from Minnesota originally and yep. I need to have an Arizona number. So yep. that's something to get easy. Yeah have mobile notifications so it mm -hmm. comes directly to your phone yeah. just so I, what i do personally is i just put an incoming call that way i know like i'm not like oh who's calling me from this number but you even know? a google do they have any more google sideline numbers or are those all tapped from out last time i knew um they didn't have any google 60 602 numbers you might want to check uh okay. sideline you can get in there every once in a while yeah yeah is it what, what is it is it an app is it a what do you do i don't know google phone Something. Google phone. Just, That's just, just get the uh, Google sideline number, or whatever. Take a look yeah. at that. Yep. Good. Alrighty. Well, Charles Holder says. Charles. I want to change my life. Let's yeah. Do it. I am Let's going go. to start today. Yep. Good job. Doing real estate school soon. Okay. <clears throat> but I want to make something happen now. Yep. I have money set aside. I'm gonna look at land today. Yep. And make some lowball offers. Good. I don't know what to do if I get a yes though. I've been learning about wholesaling and don't know how to actually do it. Help! Got it. Well, that is the first thing. I mean, he, he, here's the deal. If you get, here, here's, the, here's the, I think it's smart when you're starting this business to start building your cash buyer database as soon as possible, right? You can do this very easily. You can start reaching out to people in, to, in, in the fix and flip um, Facebook groups that you're in. You can look for people that are on LinkedIn that say that they're investors or they're flippers or they're contractors. Um, you can look on Zillow and look at the agents that are selling flip properties, right? And when they when uh, and reach out to them. So here's the deal. Let's take this step by step. Find a deal, lock it up low. Okay, put it under a purchase contract. I already there's a video that has the purchase contract here. Make sure that you. Um, run it by an attorney so that it's state specific. So there might be some language in your state that you need or <clears throat> find something online, whatever it is. Don't let that be a hurdle for you. Get it signed. And then when you have that, when you've, when you've got uh, a good deal, start calling people up, right? TTP is not just for sellers. TTP is for everybody. Talk to title companies, talk to the hard money, private money lenders, call them up. Mm -hmm. Go literally Google, I'm gonna give you instruction, literally Google hard money loans your city, private money loans your city. Call them up, ask them if they have a buyer database, tell them you have a deal that you wanna put in front of them. They do, that's what they do. They're it's filled that. with people that are flipping houses. Yeah. Hard money, private money lenders are always looking for more deals to put their buyers into. Yeah. Okay, you've got, um, people that are in the, the fix and flip groups at your local uh, real estate investor associations, like get into all those. Do not stop, do not rest until you find the right buyer for that. Do not go, don't think of five calls or five people telling you no or whatever. I'm talking you're making 100 calls, 50 calls, whatever. As you're building this thing up, you are constantly calling as many people as possible and getting that deal. Get the, deal. get the yeah. deal in front of them, yeah. right? Right. I mean, people will reach out, get the deal in front of them, and make sure that um, when the time comes that the, if you need assignment paperwork, just talk to somebody local in your market and just say, hey, I'm wholesaling this deal. Can you walk me through it? Even if they split the deal a little bit with you, get yeah. the experience of it. If you're, if you're thinking, if, if you've got somebody that's got experience that'll help you out in your marketplace, it's impossible not to find those people. Go on Facebook. They're all yeah. over the place. Right. You know what I mean? Like they're all over. Uh, if you need help, reach out to us. Reach out to put a put a note or email me at Brent at Wholesaling Inc. and I'll hook you in with somebody that's in those markets. I mean, we've got people everywhere. It's a network. So um, yeah, there's no excuses. Go out. You made the decision already. Follow through with it with action. There you go. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Last question, Eric Harris too. Yeah. Oh. No, that's the thing. Just Eric, <laughs> just Eric Harris. It's yes. Okay. Eric Harris. Okay, do you tell the owner you still have an inspection period so you have time to sell it? How do you position yourself to have enough time to find a buyer when there is nothing to really inspect since it's land? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I guess we kind of, this kind of circles back to that same question. Just make sure that you're lining. I love all these questions about land because that makes yeah. 
me feel like people are going after it, which we're, I mean, I've got checks on my desk right now from land. It is bananas. That was weird. <laughs> All hundred, come on. Anyway, um, yeah, make sure that you do your due diligence. Literally just tell the seller, uh, tell the seller that you need time to make sure that um, you understand everything going on with the property. Listen to me, land is not like houses. People are like, do what you need to do. People are like, take it off my hands. People will sign over the deed to you. It's crazy. So um, yeah, don't worry about that too much. Just go after it, tell me you need the inspection. The inspection period, even in real estate, even with houses, even with all that, is not just about the condition of the property. Mm -hmm. There's a yeah. lot of different things that go into the inspection period with the house. Yep. So, um, you know, is it is it zoned the right? How's title doing? Well, title's not really in the inspection period, but um, just what's going on with the property. In an inspection period, people literally have the right to just be in the neighborhood at nighttime to make sure like it's not crazy or they, yeah. it's not too noisy or whatever. There's a lot of different things that go in the inspection. So um, don't be afraid of, uh, of asking for a long inspection period with land. How are we doing? Good. Excellent. How are we doing? That's it. That was our last question. That was it. Yeah. That was it. Okay. Good. Line through it. Guys, this. Hey, Should we listen. Do a giveaway? Huh? Yeah. Give away a hat. Pick two from here. Who asked questions here? Let's just give two. Let's just. Uh, Uncle we're gonna Grandpa. Give... Uncle Grandpa. Woo! Uncle Grandpa for sure, and Devin Olson. Boom. Let's you guys go. are getting hats. Will you? If you're watching this, when you're watching this, make sure, how email, do they get there? Email me, Alejandra at OfferArizona.com. Uncle Grandpa and Devin Olson, you guys are getting a hat. Woo! Yay! Hat. Or shirt. Or shirt, depending. These are these are the new dad yeah. hats. So if you like that, that's cool. They don't fit my head because my head's gigantic. So, um, shirt as well. Anyway, you guys are the best. Thank you for participating in this channel. We're going to bring three videos to you every single week, interviewing some of the hottest, the biggest, the best, bringing as much value as possible, some, some keys to building up your skills and your business. And um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a wild ride. So stick around. Until next time, subscribe, hit the like button. You guys are the best. See you soon.